हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू आर ए सी जे टूटोरियल क्लासेज एज आई प्रोमिस येस्टडे दैट आई विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद फार्मोकोलॉजी सो हेयर आई एम आई एम स्टार्टिंग विद फार्मोकोलॉजी एंड फ्रॉम फार्मोकोलॉजी टूडे वी विल बी स्टडिंग विद एंटीबायोटिक प्रोफाइल एक्सेस सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द टॉपिक आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन एंड अ प्रेस्क्रिप्शन फॉर यू सो लेट लेट मी रीड आउट द क्वेश्चन फॉर यू सो आई हैव अ केस हिस्ट्री नेम एज जेंडर ऑफ द पेशेंट विद एड्रेस The patient has a chief complaint that her upper front tooth it hurts when she bites. The history of the chief complaint is patient fell from stairs 2 days back. The medical history of the patient suggests that she had infective endocarditis 3 years back. Allergy no not uh, it does not show any kind of allergy. And in the prescription that was given to the patient the patient was told because patient had to undergo an extraction so she was given amoxicillin 500 mg four capsules stat she had to take one hour before the procedure so now some of you might be wondering why she was given four stat capsules one hour before the procedure so guys that's the crux of the infective endocarditis topic that i will be starting today in the coming lectures that i will give you today i'll show you why the first choice was given to amoxicillin what other drugs are present in the regimen for antibiotic prophylaxis what is the regimen for a particular drug in infective endocarditis case so i hope you will enjoy this video and i'll definitely make some different prescription cardiac conditions requiring antibiotic prophylaxis there are certain cardiac conditions in which patients are at greater risk for infective endocarditis and we will be starting discussing each of those one by one so let's start with them the first one is prosthetic cardiac valve this means if a patient has undergone cardiac valve replacement surgery and the valve is made out of prosthetic material in that case the patient needs antibiotic prophylaxis before the start of sudden dental procedures the dental procedures that require antibiotic prophylaxis we will discuss them after we finish this topic the second condition is previous infective endocarditis this means if a patient had ever infective endocarditis that patient will always require antibiotic prophylaxis the third condition is congenital heart disease in congenital heart disease here we have certain conditions and the examples are written here the first one is tetralogy of fallet then tricuspid atresia truncus arteriosus transposition of great vessels total anomalous pulmonary venous return hypoplastic left heart syndrome interrupted aortic arch pulmonary valve atresia and epstein's anomaly i know that these are a lot but to help you with re uh, remembering them i have made a mnemonic this is 5t high 5t refers to 1 2 3 4 and 5 x stands for this i t and e in this way you will be easily remembering all these nine conditions so guys let's start with the conditions where we need to give antibiotic prophylaxis within congenital heart disease call so the first one is unrepaired cyanotic congenital heart disease if a patient is diagnosed with cyanotic congenital heart condition these one and the condition is unrepaired it's not treated in that case the patient requires antibiotic prophylaxis the second is completely repaired defects if the patient has undergone surgery for these conditions and has got his defects repaired but for the first 6 months we need to give that patient antibiotic prophylaxis the third one is repaired congenital heart disease with residual defects so for example if a patient has undergone surgery 
but still there are certain residual defects at the site of or adjacent to the site of prosthetic material present in that case we need to give the patient antibiotic prophylaxis the last condition that requires antibiotic prophylaxis is cardiac transplantation with cardiac valvulopathy that means if a patient has undergone cardiac transplantation but has subsequently developed certain valvulopathies for example mitral valve regurgitation mitral valve prolapse in that case that patient also needs antibiotic prophylaxis so guys you need to remember all these conditions so that you always remember that which conditions require antibiotic prophylaxis friends there are certain cardiac conditions where we don't require any antibiotic prophylaxis here we have certain examples of those conditions where we don't need to give any antibiotic prophylaxis few examples are mitral valve prolapse mitral valve regurgitation rheumatic heart disease prosthetic knee or hip replacement this is a non cardiac condition with the revised AHA that is American Heart Association guidelines these conditions don't require antibiotic prophylaxis so so to keep the things simple any other cardiac condition out of the one that we have previously discussed none of them require antibiotic prophylaxis let's now discuss the prophylactic antibiotic regimen there are certain drugs that can be considered in giving antibiotic prophylaxis but there is a priority in them so the list is divided into four sections patient group antibiotic the dosage for adults and for the children the first group is patient group who is who are able to take oral medication the antibiotic of choice for prophylactic antibiotic for the patients who can take oral medication is amoxicillin the dosage for the adults is 2 g orally and for the children it's 50 mg per kg the second group is patients who are unable to take oral medicine in that case ampicillin or cefazolin or cefazolin ampicillin the dosage is 2 g intramuscular or intravenous for the children it's 50 mg per kg intramuscular or intravenous cefazolin and ceftriaxone in the dosage of 1 g intramuscular or intravenous and for the kids 50 mg per kg intramuscular or intravenous now the third group is patients who are allergic to penicillins or amoxicillin or ampicillin but they can take medicines orally in that case a drug of choice is clindamycin or cefalexin or azithromycin or clarithromycin with the cefalexin the dosage is 2 g for the adults and 50 mg per kg for the kids clindamycin 600 mg 20 mg per kg for the children and azithromycin or clarithromycin for both of them 500 mg for adults and 15 mg per kg the last group is the patients who are allergic to penicillins amoxicillin ampicillin and they cannot take medicines orally in that case we can either give clindamycin or cefazolin or ceftriaxone the dosage for clindamycin in adults is 600 mg intramuscular or intravenous and in the kids 20 mg per kg intramuscular or intravenous cefazolin and ceftriaxone 1 g intramuscular or intravenous and in the kids 50 mg per kg guys to clear this exam and the questions that you get from antibiotic prophylaxis regimen you need to remember this chart in the coming sections we will be discussing 
which antibiotic takes the priority i'll teach you that as well but you need to remember this chart let's now discuss the procedures that require and those that don't require antibiotic prophylaxis the procedures that involve the manipulation of the gingival or the periapical tissue of the teeth or perforation of the oral mucosa those procedures require antibiotic prophylaxis so few examples of the procedures that require antibiotic prophylaxis first is suture removal since we remove the sutures there is a kind of perforation in the oral mucosa so this can lead to bacteremia and increase the risk of infective endocarditis so in that case the patient needs to get antibiotic prophylaxis before getting his sutures removed the other examples are intraligamentary or intraosseous injections perio procedures for example flap surgeries scaling and root planning extraction of teeth ortho procedures like orthodontic band placement these all procedures they somehow manipulate the gingival or periapical or oral mucosa so that's why we need to give antibiotic prophylaxis before these procedures second is those procedures that don't require antibiotic prophylaxis examples are the routine local anesthetic techniques for example if a patient wants to get his upper tooth extracted in that case if we are giving local infiltration we don't require any antibiotic prophylaxis in that case second in orthodontic treatments if a patient needs to get his appliances adjusted in that case also we don't need to give any antibiotic prophylaxis in routine endodontic procedures where we are confined within the canal where we don't exceed the uh, working length limit where we don't go beyond the apex in that scenario in a normal routine endodontic treatment we don't need to give any antibiotic prophylaxis but in the procedure where we think that there can be manipulation of the periapical tissue for example apicoectomy procedure in that case we do require antibiotic prophylaxis for example routine radiographic uh, procedures for example if we want to take bite wing radiograph or panoramic radiograph or periapical radiograph in those cases as well we don't need to give any antibiotic prophylaxis in kids giving fluoride treatment we don't need to give any antibiotic prophylaxis there are certain other cases where we do need to give them antibiotic prophylaxis those these patients might not be having any cardiac condition but they still require antibiotic prophylaxis the conditions are the patients who are immunocompromised that is the patients whose defense mechanism is not that good and are prone to infections examples are if a patient has acquired immunodeficiency syndrome aids patient other example is patient having diabetes patient having diabetes but if it is uncontrolled that is if it's more than 300 mg per deciliter the third case is if a patient has undergone any organ transplantation and is presently taking immunosuppressive drugs organ transplant which other example you can come up with in case of immunocompromised patients uh end stage renal disease what else think think okay 
chemotherapy patients. What else? Leukemias or lymphoma cases that are in very advanced stage. So friends, these are certain known cardiac conditions, but here also patients do require antibiotic prophylaxis because these patients are at a greater risk of infections. So let's read them once again. AIDS, diabetes mellitus, but it should be uncontrolled. That is uncontrolled. That is more than 300 to 400 milligram per deciliter. Organ transplant patients who are taking immunosuppressive drugs. Taking immuno suppressants. Then is end stage renal disease, chemotherapy patients, leukemia or lymphoma patients in advanced stages. So guys, as we have read everything about infective endocarditis, now let's come back to the same case history and the prescription that I showed you in the very beginning. So now, the patient had chief complaint of upper front tooth hurts when she bites. The history was the patient fell from stairs. Medical history, patient had infective endocarditis. Now, if you remember, the one of the condition, one of the uh, criteria where we had to give infective endocarditis was if a patient is previously having infective endocarditis. So here patient already has infective endocarditis. The second condition was if we are doing some procedure that involves the manipulation of the gingival or periapical area or the perforation of the oral mucosa. In this case, the patient had a horizontal fracture of the tooth. So the dentist advised that patient to get that tooth extracted. So now since the extraction is to be done, the patient now qualifies for having antibiotic prophylaxis. So the patient was given this prescription that amoxicillin 500 milligram four stat capsules one hour before the procedure. So four stat means 500 into four. It comes out to be 2000 milligram or two gram. Okay, now let's make, make some changes in this case history. Now, if the patient has allergy to penicillin, so what do you think? What changes should be made in the prescription? Now, since patient is allergic to penicillin, we can no longer give amoxicillin to the same patient. So if you remember that chart, we have to come to group three, where patient was allergic to penicillins but could take medicines orally. In that case, we could give the patient clindamycin. So here we can give the patient clindamycin 300 milligram. And if you remember, what was the uh, dose of the clindamycin? Yes, it was 600 milligram. So 300 milligram in one capsule. So this means we have to give two capsules. So here, two stack, one hour before the procedure. Because 300 milligram into two comes out to be 600 milligram. So guys, if you remember in that chart, in the same chart, we had clindamycin, we had cephalexin, we had azithromycin. So in that case, all of the medicines, these become first line of drug when a patient is allergic to penicillin. But when patient has no allergy, then amoxicillin is the first line of drug in case of infective endocarditis.